Back at it again, talking about Mando Season 3. Episode 2 has dropped on Disney+, Plus, and some stuff went down. So now I talk about it with the spoilers, you know the drill. If you have not watched the second episode of Mando Season 3 yet, and you plan on it, do not watch this video because I will be ruining the episode for you. Unless you don't care, in which case, welcome. Alright, so last we left off, the last episode ended with Din's talk with Bo-Katan. Which, if I'm being honest, I'm not sure why he went to her in the first place. Like, what was the point of going there? I'm still not sure why, but alright. We knew that he was looking for a memory circuit for IG-11. So we go back to Tatooine and Pelimoto. Always nice to see her again because, like I said, I like that character. I mean, we've known her since Season 1, and she's been in all of it. Season 1, 2, even Book of Boba Fett. And now we see her again. And it goes down pretty much how I predicted it would from the shots in the trailers. We saw Mando's ship with R5 in an atmosphere that looks like Mandalore, judging from the shots in the other trailers. We haven't seen this particular shot yet, but it was enough for me to piece it together in my head, I guess. And so yeah, that's what happens. Pelimoto sells R5 to D&G. And Din's like, alright, good enough. Guess I don't need Taika Waititi after all. We still gotta let Grief Karga know. And so we go to Mandalore. Yeah, here we are, already. Like, when I saw this episode was titled The Minds of Mandalore, I was like, already? We're going there now? Two episodes into this season? Alright, I thought this would be like the end goal or something, you know? Which does lead me to wonder what the rest of this season has in store for us. That's exciting. But yeah, we see Mandalore and it's all destroyed because of the Purge. The Night of a Thousand Tears. It is pretty cool to finally see this planet in live action since we have saw it in animated form in Clone Wars. Man, Mandalore is just not the planet it used to be. I will say that. And so when D&G are exploring the caves, we do finally get to see Din use the Darksaber for the first time in this season. Not the first time ever, we've seen him use it before. I meant the first time in this season, you know what I mean. We heard him say he does still have it in the last episode, now we get to see the proof. Cause he uses it to take on those Alamites that remind me of Wampas. That was pretty cool. Although he does eventually get captured, which gives Grogu his moment to shine. Dude, I gotta say, Grogu is the MVP in this episode for damn certain. I mean, even right after Din gets captured, Grogu goes, like, we see him investigating the case. He's, like, watching from behind cover, seeing what Din is going through. And I was sitting there watching this last night, like, what's he gonna do? He goes up to Din, he tries to rescue him, but I guess his force power's not strong enough yet. And Din's like, go get Bo-Katan. And so he does. Grogu gets back to the ship, and he tells R5, I mean, he doesn't actually say anything, but he points to the planet on the chart, and he's like, go here. I was like, oh my god, Grogu, getting it done. I love that. I guess Grogu is more sentient than I thought he was anyway. That's great, man. D and G, they are actually a team. Side note, I actually love the way that Din talks to Grogu now. Like when they're in their starfighter and Din is explaining to Grogu, you know, how to be a Mandalorian. You have to know how to navigate the galaxy. He's talking to Grogu as if he completely understands what he's saying because he does. Grogu may not be able to convey his thoughts verbally yet, but he can comprehend what's going on around him. And so he goes and gets Bo-Katan in the course of like five minutes. Seriously, I mean, Din Djarin, it looks like he's getting slow roasted on a rotisserie, a la Han Solo on Endor in Return of the Jedi. Just had to point that out, I guess. By the time Grogu comes back with Bo-Katan, he's still in the same place. Honestly, don't know if I'm quite buying that. But yeah, Bo-Katan Kryze does come back, bringing all her emotional baggage with her. I mean, you can tell just her being back here, it brings back a lot of memories for her. We remember, if you watch Star Wars Rebels, she did rule for a time. She says it here, and we remember. I'm telling you, it all ties together. This, and Star Wars Rebels, and Ahsoka, since the Rebels crew is going to be in that show. Just saying. So Bo comes back, she rescues Din Djarin. She does use the Darksaber to do it, though. She uses it to wipe out that weird, creepy Krang from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows looking fucker. Honestly, not sure if something that looks like that belongs in Star Wars. It didn't look like Star Wars. It looked like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. It looked like Krang. Because, you know, it had that eye that looked like it was a fleshy human eye or something inside of a machine. I don't know. But getting back to Bo-Katan with the Darksaber, because I thought she wasn't allowed to use it. Like, I don't know how the Darksaber works in lore. Like, Mandalorian lore. Mandalore. Like, didn't Bo-Katan say that only the person who won the Darksaber in battle would be able to use it or something? Is the Darksaber like a wand in Harry Potter where it only responds to those who win it in battle? I don't know. I'm confused. I guess Bo-Katan can use it pretty well, though. Because she makes quick work of that creepy thing. And so after that, Din is like, I still gotta go to those living waters. Even though Bo-Katan doesn't believe in that stuff. She's from Mandalore, she's from a royal family in Mandalore, but she doesn't believe the legends. But she volunteers to take Din there, probably just to show him that it's not real. Although we learned that it is definitely real, I'll get to that right now. Because we get to the living waters and I was like, wow. Again, two episodes in, we're already there. 
I didn't think we'd see this place until towards the end of the season. So much for my whole theory about him realizing that the way of the Mandalore is not for him. Yeah, I'm guessing that's probably out the window by now. And so, Din goes in. He's reciting the Mandalorian Creed oath as he's going into the water, when all of a sudden he gets yoinked down, like Jaws style. And I actually love how brave and selfless Bo-Katan is right here. Cause she doesn't hesitate for a second, she just goes right in there after him. See, she tries to come off as jaded, and she is jaded, but deep down she is still a hero. That's why I like her as a character. And so she sees him at the bottom of this huge lake, oh my god. There's a lot more going on underneath the surface than above the surface lets on, that's for sure. And so she gets him at the bottom, and as they're going back up, this. We see this huge beast, and I was like, alright, so another huge beast in another Star Wars adventure. But then we get a good look at this thing, and yeah, I noticed the facial shape, and I was like, holy shit, that is the Mythosaur. As in the Mythosaur of Mandalorian legend, the shape of that thing's face became the crest, the symbol of the entirety of the Mandalorian culture. You know, the symbol that was on Boba Fett's original armor. We Star Wars fans, we've known that symbol forever. So holy shit, alright, the Mythosaur is here, so yeah, you better believe the legends are real, Bo-Katan. That's pretty crazy, so they get out of the lake and that's where the episode ends. Again, great ending, because this is just the end of this part of the story. There is more to tell. Got some theories if I'm thinking ahead. I can see Din, like, on the back of this giant Mythosaur going up to the armor and being like, Am I redeemed now? That'd be awesome and kinda hilarious. Kinda channeling Boba Fett on the Rancor, but a thousand times more awesome. All I know is I can't wait for that conversation between Din and Bo-Katan next week. Yep, this season's certainly doing what it promised, diving into that Mandalorian culture more than either of the previous two seasons have. And I'm digging it so far. Both episodes so far, they've been good, they've been solid. Again, I love the fact that it does seem to be dropping that episodic bullshit. Nice job. So, The Mandalorian Chapter 18, The Minds of Mandalore. Have you watched it yet? What are your thoughts on it? And what are your theories for what might happen next week? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get back to playing Hogwarts Legacy. I'm actually almost done with it, so expect a video somewhat soon. Peace!